So in Genesis 28, 12, and he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and top of it it reached to heaven, and behold, the angel of the Lord ascended and descended on it. Ascended and descended on it, and behold, the Lord stood, stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, and the land there were on thy lies, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. So, before Jacob goes to sleep, we already saw how he's going to sleep, where he's going to sleep with a very terrible mental state. He is in the middle of nowhere, far from his family and his house. And after he falls asleep, God is showing him that he is not alone. He's um, dreaming of a ladder that's starting from the earth and finishes in, hev in the heavens. So this um, ladder, the Lord is standing on it and angels are ascending and descending from it. Even though the circumstances of his life, of Jacob, so like mom doesn't know where he is and his brother already lost hope to find his uh, sacrifice to murder and also in Judaism it is completely honorable to think that I so it's apparently in Judaism it's believed that the son of Esau ran to Jacob and ran after Jacob so he got to Jacob but instead of seeing uh, no my goodness so the, what happened was that he got too scared to kill Jacob the son of like Esau so he uh, didn't kill him he robbed him instead so uh, we're not going to listen to these um, fairy tale stories and that's why we see that um, Jacob shows, uh, God shows Jacob that even though his circumstances get uh, disappear from anybody's mind, for everybody's minds, it's not from God's. When we think about the hostages in Gaza, we can start to think that so many people think and pray for them and know they don't like really know where exactly they are, but they know that there is some kind of hope or some kind of um, chance that they will come back. And yes, today, I didn't hear the news, but from with all the signs, they are supposed to, they supposedly had to, um, like, release some. You cannot even describe the happiness that's going to happen. And yeah, so even though the circumstances of those that we don't know about it doesn't um, disappear from God's eyes God wants to um, encourage Jacob and he wants to show him the dream and this is how God decides to um, encourage Jacob and even though the emotion, hard emotional state of Jacob then he promises a promise that he promised also to Isaac and Abraham and he promised to um, fulfill the covenant that he did with his um, fathers. So in other words, he says, okay, maybe you think that you don't have anything right now, but I promise you a, um, a land. Maybe like, okay, you don't have money, you don't have anything, but you have like maybe, I don't know, like... A, your staff but I promise you something that you can't even imagine someone without a house God promises to give you a land and the place where you um, are laying down in the end of the um, in the place we're reading verse 13 and the God of Isaac the land whereon thy liest to thee will I give it and thy seed and, but okay there are no kids but here the promise is given this is a very interesting um, meeting this is the first m personal meeting between Jacob and the God of Abraham and Isaac this is the a meeting um, occasion of the meeting so throughout all history there were a lot of um, meetings 
between God and humans. Also, I had one of those, and I believe that、um, you had something like that to be like, "Oh, hi, I'm your God. I'm here, and I'm your God." In the time of Jesus, the time、uh, the meetings between God and humans was. They met God when they met Jesus Christ. The, really like that.、And、one of those、um, meetings is described in John one. Nathaniel is、um, invited to a meeting with、um, Jesus. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said unto him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile. And Nathanael said unto him, Whence knowest thou me? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Before the, before that Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and said unto him, Hey, by thou art the son of God, thou art the king of Israel. So one of the、um, descendants of Abraham、um, receives the. The opportunity to、um, have a meeting between him and God, so it's kind of like a parallel between when Jacob met God and Daniel met Jesus. So、um, here we're talking about the first meeting between God and human. So the first time. And Nathaniel asks Jesus, "Where do you know me?" And then Jesus says that I saw you under the fig tree. Nathaniel、um, admits that he's really some the one who he's who he says he is. And what does Jesus say to him? Jesus answered and said to him, "Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree. Believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these." And he so Jesus、um, promises Nathaniel that his faith will be even stronger. From what he will see and will experience in the future, Nathaniel didn't look for Jesus. Jesus found him in、uh, the. He, Jesus saw him in the under the fig tree much before he even thought he was the Messiah. Just like Jacob didn't think that he would find God, because he probably was. Probably he thought that God left him. Also, Nathaniel didn't expect that meeting with Jesus. Jesus continues to promise him, and actually, yeah, and says unto him, "Verily, verily, I send you." Did you see how Jesus just included him into the group? He first turns to him、um, as a singular, and then after he says, after Nathaniel says that he's the son of God and the king of Israel, so he. He already pointed them to him and, and like turned to him as many hereafter ye shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. So it's kind of a parallel. So in God's word, he, in the words of Jesus, he、um, describes himself as the latter. So. The ladder was the Messiah. The ladder is also the middle of the the dream. So Jesus is the the bridge between heaven and earth, between man and God. The ladder of David of of Jacob is exists in every believer's life. God's word it satisfies our connection with God. And when Jesus is the ladder between us and God, so we have a connection with Him. We read. We read in Genesis twenty-eight. Oh my, twenty-eight. So God is the one who takes the um. I'm so sorry. He takes the initiative, so he is the one who's making、um, the connection. So God is looking for you. Jacob goes out to a new way, and he is emotionally broken. How amazing it is that God gives、um, Jacob the confidence that even that the, his connection with him can be anywhere. So Jacob is nowhere. 
but his the connection with him and heaven is stronger than ever. And this was the plan, the、um, original plan for the whole all of his people, because Jacob is our father. And when we say this, each one of Jacob's descendants is supposed to.、Um, Represent what Jacob had. So, what plan? The plan that God had for Jacob, it also has to be for every single believer. And that's why he sent the ladder in the、um, in the shape of Jesus Christ. So it should have been something happy. There are no two ladders, or three. There are only one.、Um, Why? Why is it only one? Does God have only one ladder? Why does God not have ladders? So there could be a lot of ladders to heaven, but no, no, no. There's only one ladder to heaven. He is the only way and the only connection between the heaven and earth. And we remember God's, the words of Jesus, and one of、um, the disciples of Jesus that told him in. Um, John fourteen, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man comes unto the Father,、um, but by me, but through me. But this is actually the symbol, one of the prettiest symbols that describe Jesus. He is the comfort of the world and the only hope to be with our Father in heaven. And so, how do we? Okay, renew our relationship with the with the whole with our Father in heaven. So our faith is the one that、um, lets us put our feet in the right place and to start walking the right way. When when you go on a ladder, you can't go in another in any other direction. You have to go in the same direction. You can't go. Left or right, you have to go in the same direction, or else you will find yourself very easily down. That's how it works. And we see that it also has to be like that with your faith. This is what God wanted to give Jacob in our、uh, sermon today, and also for every single one that lives on the earth. The only hope, actually, the ladder of Jacob that is actually the Messiah in Luke twenty-four.、Um, two of God, Jesus' disciples are going out of、um, Jerusalem, so they're just like in the parasha in her sermon. So they are leaving the city. With very very bad、um, emotional state, so we can see that、um, their emotional state was the the result of what they had experienced before. They didn't use God's word, and that's why they were lost. They were very sad because they understood that Jesus that、um, was crucified was. The one that they thought that、um, would go and rule over、um, Jerusalem. So, but Jesus, he joined them in their walk. And so, very very discouraged Jews that saw that the Messiah was crucified and they were going in the way to Emmaus. And behold, two of them went that day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about thir. Three score furlongs, and they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus Himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know Him. And He said unto them, What manner of communications are <laughs> these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? So they were going out on the way, and they were.、Um, Talking as if their hope with in Jesus was completely、um, destroyed. So we, as we can see, that Jesus joined them in a place where they were physically and also emotionally. They asked them, "What are they talking about?" So both of them stopped, and eyes、um, were sad. Cleopas answered and said unto him, "Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass in these days?" And he said unto them, "What things?" And they said unto him, "Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty indeed, and the word before God and all the people." 
and how the chief priests in our so Cleopas is like really surprised by this um, question of Jesus so he was very surprised because usually everybody would know about it so he said okay so what was it and then Jesus actually himself reveals to them that um, the disciples don't really know what happened there or who was the Messiah or what needed to be the Messiah or who really was on the cross Jesus to them he is a, a prophet a mighty indeed and this is already something wrong Okay, they already went on a different ladder. This is not the ladder that they were supposed to go on. So, okay, so we're not, it's not surprised that they were not in a good emotional space and were disappointed. You need to be, you need to have the right ladder in order for us to receive um, a certain good emotional state. So here we see that they went on the wrong ladder, but Jesus goes up to look for them just like a she a shepherd that's looking for lost sheep so they went on a different ladder and they thought that they lost their shepherd but they, he found them you know soon there's okay so there's like black friday so also the disciples um talked about their black friday and that day they lost their blackest friday what did they lose they lost the messiah they thought that they lost him on this friday this friday was the darkest blackest friday ever and just like we said now that you say black friday is something connected to money money but not just money it's like a lot of money i think people think of the most bought things i don't know about this year with all the war and everything with all the financial state but anyway this is the day that also here in israel and the world day where thousands of people millions of people are going to find um this, this is black friday and we don't understand the black friday in this situation we we think about the black friday that the disciples were um thinking wrong because their mistake was to go on a different ladder so they were just their ladder was um but, you know like to be taken away from the Romans and stuff. And, how the, and then verse 20, And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death, and we have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, to this today th is the third day since these things were done. Yeah, and, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early in the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had seen a vision of angels and said that he is alive. Certain of them that were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even so, as the woman has said, but him they saw not. So the disciples wanted a different they hoped for a different messiah they hoped for a messiah that is victory and conquering and will deliver them from the hard situation and they didn't expect that their um, um, warrior to die on the cru on the cross and there there are people many many people that don't think that the messiah came yet because how can it be that we're still in this pain how how is it logical that the messiah came and the situation is still like this and remember that um, the disciples don't know anything of this their um spiritual state is so terrible is and they're not even turning to God, but they're turning to what a lot of people are doing. Instead of turning to God's word, they turn to their own heart's thoughts. Yeah, okay, so they're just thinking about your wishful thinking. And not you're not actually um, treating the reality like it is. So the circumstances of your life can be very hard and that's why you want an immediate solution solution, and you want that it will be um, because of your 
um, view of life. And it is something natural, but it's exactly what happened to the disciples. They didn't want a Messiah that will die and resurrect. He want, they wanted the King of Israel that will um, banish the Romans, conquer the Romans, and will give financial peace and peace from the Romans and everything that they did. He answered them and said, Then he said unto them, O oh, fools and slow of heart to believe all that, prophet, all that the prophets had spoken. So this word in the Bible, we'll talk about it. Oh, fools and slow heart to believe all that the prophets have said, spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these? So he's not turning to the disciples in a politi correct, politically correct ways. So he starts with, oh, fools. So this is showing a dismay on a situation that is um, showing sadness and sorrow about a certain situation, a bad situation. So what is the problem of them? Their problem is very, very bad. They are slow to believe and they don't. So maybe there are religious people that do their traditions and do their the different traditions that they learn, but they don't really know and understand what God said. But they're Jews. They are going to the temple. They're 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 kissing the mezuzah. They're doing everything what they taught them, and they have one problem: they are completely clueless. Clues of that, um, clues of that ladder. Instead of going next to the ladder that gives you knowledge, you went away from them. There's not a connection to I'm um, good and bad, and connection to who are you. You can be a good person. You can be an amazing person. But it doesn't matter because you chose the wrong ladder for many reasons. Um, a ladder that they guided you to be, or a ladder that said. Um, that people said, oh, get on that, because that's what people told us to go on. Okay, they also told you, and you went up with all your heart, but there's one problem. You have a problem. You are slow of heart to believe all that the, po the prophets have spoken. This is what they needed. I just needed to listen to Bible classes in, in school, not to understand who, how they talked, how the prophets talked, or what they actually said. And literally what they said. And if the um, prophet said that this is the pipe of connection that God wanted to create in order to satisfy and um, bring God and earth as a connection, so so they used very, very good um, words named uh, words like here I am. And so they read God and then they brought what God said to the people this is what this is the knowledge that god wanted to give to his people this is the one that he wanted to give to jacob and nathaniel and to both of the um, very very nice jews that they're going with with deep depression to um to, from jerusalem to Emmaus, and they don't know what is happening in the spiritual world they are doing the traditions but they don't have knowledge of the scriptures they don't really understand what the prophets are uh, like prophesied about the Messiah's mission is the situation here different Jesus is calling um, the disciples fools and heavy heart did, like stubborn this was the state of Pharaoh's heart a state of a heavy heart a stubborn heart let's go to um, Exodus 8 verse 25 so uh, one of the plagues hit, hit um, Egypt and Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Go ye, sacrifice to your God in the land. And Moses said, It is not me so to do if we could, shall sacrifice the nomination of the Egyptians to the Lord um, our God. Lo, we shall sacrifice the... Um, and... What? I don't think this is the right verse. 
And we will go three days' journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God as he shall command us. And Pharaoh said, I will let you go, that ye may sacrifice the Lord your God in the wilderness, only ye shall not go very far away and treat me. Um, so, and Moses said, Behold, I go out to thee, and I will entreat the Lord, and the swarm of flies may depart from Pharaoh and from his servants and from his people. So in verse 28, and Pharaoh said, I will let you go. Um, it's not the right verses. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Verse 22. Okay, so verse 32. And Pharaoh hardened his heart, and at this time also neither would he let the people go. So after a lot of um, experience, I also had this um, problem for not a short time because my heart was hard, and I did a lot of thinking in my heart. My heart was um, stubborn because it had... There were a lot of circumstances and symptoms of like like post symptoms to my close relatives, my mom, my dad, my my siblings, my brothers, and all those that are connected to my life really, really didn't they really didn't like the me, the connection with me and Jesus. But I had to re- make a decision, and I tell you what, it's not easy. And the day that I received that decision, made that decision because it's not because my wife was very nice or my mom wasn't mad, or because of humans at all. When I decided to believe to God's um, prophets, I decided to read and understand and try to see what they are talking about. And why is it important to understand them? And when I understood the prophets, my eyes were really opened. You know what I received? I received knowledge. Knowledge. I want the um, knowledge to know which ladder to go and on and which way to go, and I don't want to be sad when I should be happy. Hosea 4, verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitations of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, no knowledge of God in the land. So here in Israel, Jesus isn't an option to be called the Messiah. And why? Because there are a lot of reasons. First of all, we're not going, we're not going to tell all of them today, but the um, reason is for, for thousands of years, they tried to convince that the people of Israel that he is not the Messiah. So he's connected to idolatry. He's not connected to Judaism. So my eyes were opened in the moment when I saw the truth in God's word. I opened the New Testament and from the first word and until the last word, I didn't find anything Christian or Catholic. But I found a lot of Jewish things, real things. Things that pointed to knowledge, to deep connection between what the Bible is saying and what the New Testament is saying and being fulfilled. And what an amazing thing it was to know, to, to find knowledge. Who doesn't want knowledge? Everybody wants to be smart. Everybody wants to know in order to get something. God also wants this. And Hosea say this, hear the words of the Lord, people of Israel. This is what God is saying. This is not Hosea. It's not the opinion on, of Hosea. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Who wants to have a controversy with God? With who? With the inhabitants of the land. And by the way, it's not with the Jews. It's with the inhabitants of the land. All the people. Because there's no truth. And that's the problem. Because that's the reason. Because there's no truth and no mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. And that's why you cannot have God's knowledge without the Bible. Whoever um, thinks that he can be close to God but far from God's word, he can he will realize that he's in the same connection 
um, he's in the same state as the people that went to Emmaus, the two people, the two disciples. And they don't have any idea, and you can tell them everything. And you can tell them that Esau said to Eliphaz, his son, to go and to murder his um, uncle Jacob, and then he, his mom Timna, because actually that's a mistake, because that wasn't Esau's wife. Okay, that was a uh, mistake that they did. It was actually, I don't know who. Um, but we don't need this um, stories that don't actually exist. So Eliphaz did not rob the money from Jacob, and it's not written anywhere. But the moment that a person gets to a party and says, okay, I'm a, this rabbi, rabbi, and you say, oh, I heard this rabbi. And then he said, okay, we're, go on this ladder. Okay, why do you have to go on this ladder? Why? Because you're Jewish. Because you believe in what they told you to the um, um, tradition. But what about this? Is there a, a chance that the ladder that you're going on, climbing on, is not the right one? Yes, there is a proof. Because read the Bible and then you will decide if Eliphaz wanted to murder Jacob. You can think, not me. You can choose if this is the right letter or not right. Not me. When I talk to people like that and they actually open, they open their mouth and cannot say any much because they have nothing to say. Because, okay, it's not written in the Bible, but our um, smart people, rest in peace, uh, they, they said it, okay, so... Just because they said it was right, God said that it's not right. Just because they said it was right and God said it's not right, that I won't listen to them just because they need to rest in peace. Um, what um, letter are we going on? So that's very important to know. What is the meaning of... What is the meaning of the prophets prophecies oh so he started from moses okay what type of a christian is this so he didn't start from the new testament he started from moses which is the t the uh, torah and the prophets and he showed them everything that pointed to him showed them everything that pointed to him so he's talking about he's talking to the people who actually read the torah but don't know that anything is actually pointing to him is the plan of salvation really pointing to Jesus? How can we be sure? What is Jesus actually doing? He is starting from the Torah of Moses, and he's going through all of the prophets, and this is what we're doing. How can I explain that this is actually him? I can do what I need to do what he did. I need to start from the Torah, and to, uh, yeah, it has all the explanation. Whoever really wants to know, and his heart isn't hard isn't too hard and the tradition isn't too heavy on him and just other people's opinions so he's coming with an open mind and he's coming with um a willingness to learn and to know because there's a chance that you can actually see the plan of god being opened before you entirely from genesis to revelation really in the most beautiful way with all the connections with all the beautiful connection i already saw sometimes we receive um things like we see um miracles in our life people that their eyes were closed their eyes were opened they saw what i was able to see they saw jesus christ they saw the right ladder and they found uh the right ladder and how many ladders are in their world so many so many each one of them goes to another way but there's only one ladder that actually threw him through it, you can get to the God of Israel, and that's Jesus Christ, and there's no other. I found myself. Okay, so th how many ways does God have only one? How much truth does God have one? Oh, God have one. People say, no, seven faces to the Torah. No, there's only one face to the Torah. There is no seven. You can't get with God to every direction you want. It's important to learn the knowledge of God and to open God's word and to say, yes, God has a plan and I want to be part of it. Even though the whole world tells me no, it's not right. I want to choose to check it for myself. Because in the end of the day, when somebody does such a big, um, so much effort to show me that he's not the Messiah, maybe I can do some effort to show him that he is. You know, it's important. 
it's very very important that we will know because what did the um, so I know read um, Isaiah 53 but this is the very very um, detailed things uh, chapters in a very very detailed and nice way to show about what we're reading now because um, the Messiah had to um, bear all those things so he started oh my goodness so Jesus is saying that the prophets talked about him the testimony of Jesus the witnessing of Jesus isn't about somebody else it's about himself he's explaining to his disciples the plan of God and he um, encourages them like he encourages Jacob he says oh you are going to um, inherit the land and really the land will really be yours in the f- the everlasting land. So, um, the ladder is Jesus, that, and that's the ladder that can you can renew your life in relationship with God. You can you have to do it already today. You, like you should have done it yesterday, and you need to, we need to know what it means. Our everlasting future is connected to my decision. Oh uh, yes, I need to decide. I need to decide to receive the knowledge and that my la- my um, heart should not be too hard. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the ladder between heaven and earth and you cannot go to Jesus, to um, heaven without uh, without Jesus. Let's read in 1 John 2, verse 21. So John, he had an amazing um experience with God, he had a very, very deep um, connection with him. He very had very a lot of experiences. Um, I have not written unto you because you not, know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is and the Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. So whoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledged the Son hath the Father also. So you heard about the Antichrist. In other words, if you throw this ladder, no other ladder go- gets there. You. Um, let there before abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning, that if ye have heard from the beginning, I shall remain in you. Ye shall also continue in the Son of God and in the Father. So, and this is the promise that he hath promised unto us even eternal life. So those that are talking lies and says that Jesus is the, not the Messiah, who he has disconnected him, himself from God, the Father. We're continuing to read in First John 2, 9-12. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater, for this is the witness of God, which he had testified in, of his Son. I want to read what is written in the Torah. I want to know what is written in the Torah. And today, when people tell other people to read the Bible, they're going to ladders that have no connection to the Torah. They have connections with stories about the Torah. If we receive, if we receive the witness of man, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he had testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God has hath the witness in himself he that believeth not in God had made himself a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave his, of his son and this is the record that God had given to us eternal life and this life is in his son he that had the son of life okay so the um, clearness of this uh, of this verse is um, for a person the only person who won't understand is a person that has a hardened heart so whoever has a hardened heart well, he shall put it on right now because this is too straightforward he that hath the son hath life and he that hath not the son of God 
hath no life. So maybe this verse actually put your ver- the verses in right place in your heart. The ladder of Jacob is the only connection between God and a man, and he, God promised that whoever will receive this ladder will have the um, eternal life. Whoever promised you that after you die, you continue living in heaven, this is one of the lies that you will hear according to their faith. This is the first lie, yes. So the first lie that the devil said to Eve, so Eve said, "I we God said we will die," and then the devil said, um, "We will, you shall not die." So people said, "Oh, we're just, you know, we have Reconstruction and Buddhism and Hinduism and all those things that that don't have any connection for with the Bible," and that's why we want the um, shield of Jesus Christ and the care of Jesus Christ, because He says that whoever has the Son has life, and whoever has not the Son doesn't have the life. So this is not the testimony of God. This is the testimony of uh, of man. It's of God. So also in this parasha, we, sh- parasha we see it, that the connection that we receive, that we uh, uncover today about Jesus and the um, dream of Jacob is the only connection between uh, God and His people, and He's the only mediator. And there's no other way to renew the relationship with God other than with this ladder. May God please bless. Um, whoever received this message and will receive him, uh, Jesus, as his personal Savior and his only Savior. Let's pray. תברך אותנו אבא, שהדברים שלך, ורק הדברים שלך, יהיו נר לרגלנו. ושאבא, אנחנו נבחר את הסולם הנכון, שהוא הדרך היחידה להגיע אליך. ואני מודה לך אבא, על ההזדמנות הערב הזה לשמוע את דברך, ומעבר לכך אבא, על כל ההבטחות שיש בכתובים לגבי העולם החדש שאתה תברך. תודה לך אבא על הכל. תברך את כל חברי הקהילה, גם את האורחים שלנו שהגיעו הערב. ושכל מי ששמע את המסר הזה, אבא, אנחנו מתפללים שהלב לא יהיה כבד, ושהמילה שלך תמצא את המקום הראוי לה בתוך הלב הזה, ושכולנו נהלל אותך ברוח, ולא פחות חשוב, באמת שלך. כי אנחנו באים לפניך ומודים על הכל בשם היקר של ישוע המשיח.